In this video, I want to go ahead and cover some of the ways that you can improve the efficiency of your RPCs by sending the same amount or the same data, just in a smaller form. So commonly you will find, at least for first person or really any shooters, you're going to have to at least send in, you know, maybe your projectile spawn location, like your muzzle. So in my case, I have, this is in my FPS template project or plugin, I have a muzzle device and the muzzle device has a socket on it and that socket is used as a position of where the projectile or the line trace should spawn. Now, in order to keep this accurate between the client and the server, the way I'm doing this is for the shot, I am sending the transform to the server. Now, this can be a little bit inefficient. Now, and I'll show you the ways that I alleviated this by reducing the total amount of data sent by 3.4 times. So the way this currently is, well, the reason why it's inefficient is one, you're also sending in the scale. For the socket, we're only going to be using the rotation and the location. We're not going to be using the scale. So if we send in the whole transform, we have basically an entire vector that is just wasted. On top of that, Unreal Engine also has their own type that's of a vector that serializes in a different manner to reduce the precision. So let's say we have a float here that is, uh, we'll just do 5.559657, something like this. Well, what you can do is it will round it or it will cut off the precision based upon your specification. So there's a couple of them. And I'll actually go ahead and bring those pages up really quick so we can see. Okay, so if we come over here to F vector, you will see beneath it we have F vector net quantize, quantize 10, quantize 100, and quantize normal. So with your projectiles, you don't need, you know, several points of precision you really only need the rounded up number. So for example, if we view, let's just start from the bottom and work our way up. Let's look at net quantized normal. I haven't actually looked at this one, so I'm not sure what it entails. Okay, so we can actually ignore that. So starting with net quantized 100, let's look at that. You will see that this has two decimal places of precision. So what we have done is we've taken this amount that's being sent over and reduced it to 5.55. Let's go back even farther. Here we have net quantize 10. As you can assume, this is going to have one decimal place of precision. So we went from 5.55 to 5.5. Now let's go to net quantize, which in my case for this aspect is what you should be using. This has zero places. So to sum it up, this is about like sending just a simple integer. So this reduced it down to five. So we took, we were just overall reduced the amount of data being sent for the x, y, and z values. Now, as you can assume, this is inherited from f vector. So what do we do with rotators? Well, we kind of perform it in the same manner. So basically we would have functions that convert rotators to the f vector net quantize and from, to convert it from the f vector net quantize to an f rotator. So let's go ahead and look and compare these examples before we actually dive into the code itself. So here I have two test functions. They're basically just two RPCs. One RPC takes in NF transform. The other one takes in my optimized projectile transform, which is what I'll be showing you here in a little bit. So for starters, let's go ahead and call the one that takes in the full F transform, and then we'll compare the results and the network profiler. So let's go ahead and real quickly, we will record an example. So whenever I press four, we should send the RPC. So I need to, what was it called? Network profile or net profile? Yes, net profile. So let me copy this to my clipboard real quick so I can do it faster. Okay, so net profile, enable. And about a second after I press enable, I'm going to press four. So enable, one Mississippi, four. Then disable. Okay, so that should give us our profile with the uh, F transform result. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the network profiler. And let's see, what that would be 146. So let me delete the old one and load this one up. So if we head over to the all RPCs, here you can see server underscore size test transform. And the average size for this is three point, or sorry, 329 bytes or bits. So what we want to do, I'm going to go ahead and record that. So the full F transform as it's been filled out is going to be 329 bits. Okay, now let's go ahead and compare it with 
the optimized one. So I'm going to instead call the server RPC that takes in my projectile transform struct. It's going to be done the same manner. So about a second after I press enable, I'm going to call it. So one Mississippi and disable. All right, let's head back into it. Open it up. So that should be 147, the new one, all RPCs, server underscore size test projectile transform. In this case, our average size is down to 96. So F projectile transform is 96.0 bits. So here we can take that result. And which I've already done is that answer is basically this is the size difference. So we are 3.427 times smaller. So we reduced the amount of data that's being sent by a good manner. So what we can do now is let's go ahead and look at how to actually go through and implement this. So here in my data types.h, here I have my f projectile transform struct. And all I have in it is two u properties, and they are both f vector net quantize. Now this is so we can again, uh, basically I'm only having, I'm not going to worry about having scale because again, this is for projectiles and scale is going to be completely ignored. And honestly, in most cases, you're probably not going to have to alter the scale. So what you could do is have a generalized structure here that would just have the location and the rotation in the same form that I do and just return a F transform. So you basically create an F transform from the location and the rotation and just passing in a one vector for the scale, which I'll show you because that's what I'm doing here as well. So what we have is two different constructors. So one takes in an F vector, the other one takes in a rotator, and all it does is it takes the location, or sorry, it creates our location by constructing the F vector net quantize and takes in the incoming F vector. Now for the rotation, you're going to want to make sure that you construct it in the exact same manner that you revert it back to the F rotator. So otherwise you would, you may have problems such as your pitch being in your y'all's position or roll being in your pitch and all that kind of stuff. They might be mismatched. So you want to make sure you do this in the same order. What I do here is I can write my F vector net quantize as rotation, construct the F vector net quantize, and basically I just take in the F rotator and do pitch, then y'all, then Z. So X, Y, and Z. The other constructor that I have just for helping, again, I literally just made this, so probably more stuff's gonna end up being added. The location takes in the incoming transforms location. Then same thing for the rotation. We take in the rotator and again, do it in the form of pitch, yaw, and roll. So X, Y, and Z. Then after that, I end up creating a static function here. Then I can go ahead and remove that log. That all it does is it basically takes in the incoming struct, so F projectile transform, and we'll go through and construct an actual F transform on top of that. Now the problem is with Blueprint anyways, you cannot expose, so for example, let me go ahead and I'll show you. View function, blueprint, callable. I cannot make this a blueprint callable function. As you can see, u structs cannot contain u functions. So it's just going to complain and not let us do anything. That's just due to the limitations of the uh, reflection system for Unreal Engine. But what we can do to counteract that is create a simple blueprint functions library that consist of static functions. So here I've made two static functions that are both blueprint pure or blueprint callable depending on which one you would want to use. So the first one's going to be create projectile transform. So basically this takes in a transform and constructs a F projectile transform from it. So we're basically taking the more expensive transform and constructing the lighter F projectile transform that I just showed you. Then after that we have the function that does the opposite. So it takes in the F projectile transform and instead converts it to an F transform. So as you can see here, we're calling our static function get transform from projectile right here. So we have our helper there. So this would allow you to, when you're on the client, you want to tell the server what your muzzle transform is. What you would do is you would create your projectile transform then once you send it to the server, the server would then go through and call create transform from projectile 
or for projectile. I need to actually rename that. I just realized I screwed that up to basically take it from our custom struct and revert it back to a transform. That way you can just use things like spawn actor directly with it and you don't have to deal with any annoyances that would come with it. So that pretty much wraps up everything that I can think of in that aspect. I just wanted to go ahead and cover that because I figured it would be a uh, kind of a good lesson that not everybody knows about, but a I, th I assume a good portion do. But anyways, it's just a good optimization that you can go ahead and do because it's something, especially in shooters, that's most likely going to be happening a lot. So this would just reduce the overall, the overall amount of traffic that's being sent by just a good margin. So anyways, that is going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons as well as you get early access to all of my videos such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.